seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly. And say that when you have a choice that is this clear, when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. Action. When I first saw that clip of Obama talking like that, I just wanted to just scream at him like, don't talk to me like that, you African. How dare you talk to me like that? <laughs> but gay, who gave you permission to talk to me? You don't even understand my lineage. And so, hey, Barack Obama is the president for uh, the, a very specific community, the LGBTQ plus community. That's the community that he did everything for. He didn't do anything for black Americans. He doesn't even acknowledge black Americans. He does this flat black thing. So like, if you come from anywhere in the world that you just are black, and that pertains to him greatly because his dad is like a Nigerian, a Kenyan, or whatever African nation his daddy is from. He is his father's child. And I want to talk about Barack Obama today because I'm pretty sure that his great-grandparents, his great-great-great-grandpappy uh, uh, captured my great-great-great-great-grandpappy and put me on the ship and sent me to America. You know, <laughs> so much heat for Obama because it was such a uh, distasteful thing for him to come talk to black men voters as it as if he really could talk to us. First off, how can you ridicule any black man when you don't know what it's like to be a black man? You were not raised as a black man. You really didn't live as a black man until you met Michelle Obama. That is your first entryway into what it's like to be blackness. And let me have blackness. Let me say this too. The black experience cannot be sold. It cannot be sold. You have to be in you have to be born into it. If you are not born into the black experience, if you are not born in this thing by birthright, you cannot speak on it. It can't be sold, but it can be co-opted. Uh -oh. Very much so, the same way the Jewish community, like if your mother is a Jew, then you are a Jew. Mm -hmm. I think that's how it goes. They have the matriarchal lineage when it comes to the Jewish community. Uh, very much in the black community, a a you have to be a descendant of an American slave in order to be an American black. I mean, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be difficult. We ain't got nowhere to go to. We, we ain't got no nation. And scholars especially like people like barack obama these types of politicians they know exactly who i am he knows exactly who he is he knows his daddy is an african he knows that he doesn't he doesn't share my lived experience so when he talks to me i'm just like who are you talking to and who gave you permission to talk like that throughout through our voting habits we made him the king of the negro and he's not even a negro they, they do this whole bait and switch thing and they play with us and we'll let them play with us. I'm like, man, you're not going to play with me no more. I know we, who I am. We let them play with us because we haven't defined it and we don't <laughs> check it. And it's like, we don't, we pick and choose with who's going to, well, Drake, you can't have a black experience, but Obama, you can have a black experience. Well, Kamala, you can have a black experience, but this person over here can Hey, cause there's no difference between <laughs> Obama, Kamala, and Rachel Dolezal. If your black experience doesn't directly align with whatever the talking points are that, that specifically reference black women, then you're not a black person. How dare he? He tells me to. there's no black woman in Obama's life ever in his whole life. And so when he talks about black women are always so supportive, what black woman? You ain't meet Michelle until later in your life. And so for your whole life, white women have surrounded you and gave you adulation because you was Barry, <laughs> you assimilated into their culture, and then when you come back to me, you want to try to pretend like you sing Marvin Gaye when you don't. That's not your connection, man. Sing some bongos and and goddamn. <laughs> and let's and let's be clear. Um, bub, um, bub, um, bub. Michelle isn't vibing with you if you aren't ascending to where you were. You She's are just already beard. going where you are. <laughs> He can't. He don't wear a beard as a politician, but she is his beard. Every time he step out, we think that that's what he's about. No, he likes to bite the pillow. I've even heard men get in the comments and just be like, 
oh man, she's everything without without him, without her, she he's nothing. It's like dog, and that's the other problem problem with us as black men too. It's like we are so subservient to the woman because we too live in a matriarchal society. So that's why we are fighting the way we some of us, some of the sassy Democrats are fighting for Kamala. Oh, y'all don't respect women. Y'all, y'all black men as a whole don't value black women. How is that true? How? How is that you tell me because how that, we that, don't that, value black feeling. women? That's how they feel. And so since they feel that way, then they can say that. Hey, why do you have the ability to defend yourself and be like black girl power, black girls rock, all these things? Be so proud of who you are and your identity. But me as a black man, I can't celebrate with you and be like, hell yeah, black men rock, black men are powerful, black men are smart, black men right. conquer the world. Why can't we talk like that? And I'm not trying to compare myself to no woman. I'm just asking you, if we're going to play identity politics, then we have to play by the exact same rules, right? Here's the other thing. Here is the other thing. As a black man, you're telling me that I can't make a decision for myself. You're telling me that I can't look at something objectively and say, uh, I don't know if I like that. So let me go over here. Obama, you're telling black men that we're so silly and we can't think and that we need to be told what to do. We have the ability to organize politically. Being a black man in America is a political experience. All of life is a political experience. How you spend your money, what kind of car you buy, the, the clothes you wear. It's a political statement. And so once black men, once we come together and have a 10 million man march, that is a political statement that says, I watched you. I watched the Democratic Party over the last 40 years do everything in their power to make black women my superior. And so I'm like, I'm not I don't agree with those politics. I don't agree with you telling me that I can't be my full self. Man, I know that I, be, I believe in power and the whole world believes in power. And the moment you, you say that I can't compete in a fair way, that's illegal. I'm going to pass legislation and you're going to respect me as a political entity the same way that you protect every other group of people. Why is there such a weight on blackness in this election? It's like proving that she's black and getting the black vote. Why are they so stumped down on this? That 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 should let you know right there. They've all they've talked to y'all about is blackness. They haven't told you about any political agenda. We've said this all that we say this so often. She, they she has. Yet. They ask her what her political agenda is. They will. They, you know, they have, they have the, the coded question. And so when they say, how do you differ from Joe Biden? She says, well, clearly I'm different than Joe Biden. If that's your <laughs> answer is because you're a different human being than this person, you don't have a different political agenda. So what she said is it's going to be the status quo for the next four years. The way it looks right now, high inflation, we're going to keep doing it again. Bombing it, we're going to keep doing it again. Supporting Israel, we gonna con we're going to continue to fight these perpetual wars because that's the agenda. That's the game plan. Should a woman be the president of the United States? Do I have the right to answer that question? Honestly, can I tell you how I truly feel? Or are you going to get offended because I don't agree with your position? If I don't agree with the woman, then I'm misogynistic. If I don't agree with the black agenda, then somehow I'm a, I'm a Uncle Tom and you ain't even never read the book before. And so when you ask me this question, it's a loaded question. We live in a political climate. Everything that we say is judged. You'll go viral and hung and... and and they'll just laugh at you like, ha, 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 you know you wasn't supposed to say that. When you live in a society where you know there are things that you're not supposed to say, is that a free society? No. That's a terrifying society. Terrifying. <laughs> and they're perpetuating that even more. Barack Obama, he, they want to attack the First Amendment because they say that speech isn't protected. You don't have the right to say what you want. And yes, you can be prosecuted for, the, in Europe, they're prosecuting people for the things that they say on social media. And when they had they had a, one of those conferences yeah. and one of those European representatives, they said, oh, it's coming to you too. <laughs> the, the, these programs are coming to America where they can silence you, they can censor you, they can spy on you, and you don't care. And you have two black men here right now that you see weekly, all the time, many of you daily, speaking about everything that's going around us in society. We have valid opinions. And so, Mr. Obama, you do not speak to me when you pick out a slither of black men that you think they operate and act a certain way. You're not talking about me. You do not represent me. And in fact, your background doesn't represent me either because you know nothing what it's like to be black. And I'll say this and I'll say it again, regardless of how you feel about Kamala. Kamala is at least blacker than Obama. Obama's the least black president 
Um, period. Point and blank. Neither one of these people share my lived experience. She got to, as soon as you get to travel, you be you be you enter the elite status. Like if you're a child in a, of a military family and you get to go from place to place, you get something they call culture capital. You get to experience different people in different regions. And so you learn different behaviors and you grow as a human. That exposure, it takes you away from like the average poor person. They never really travel outside of their they community. So all they know is the, bull, the, the the nasty stuff that they see, the degenerate behavior. And so when that's your exposure and you talk to me when you done been to Hawaii and the other that you've been to Canada and all around. I'm laughing at Jay-Z anyway. That music be stuck in your head. Programming is crazy. Oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm just rocking. Obama got a stepdaddy who's Indonesian. There's a statue of Obama outside of an elementary school in Indonesia. His sister's Indonesian. His mother's white. His grandmother, his grandparents, whom he looked up to, who he had, I think, I believe, a five hundred thousand dollar trust from, they are white. So Do that, you know what that like? like oh God, we man. we miss that so. I'm so fired up. I told him I was fired up for the show. I'm so frustrated too because y'all. What are you can't frustrated see, about? Like, what, what, where, where's the frustration come because from? Because when you go and look at the political discussion amongst black people. This has us in a chokehold. This simple thing. When I went on Facebook and I said black, when I said Obama does not have a connection to real black men, some of the Democratic black men got in my comments and there they are to the races saying all kind of things. One, one of those things is that black men don't really value black women. So he kind of needed to say that. I've got a problem with that because because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. And I think anybody you are talking to in a barbershop, anybody you are talking to in your house, in your family, at a, at, a, at a church who is coming with that kind of attitude, I think you have to ask them, well, how can that be? Because the women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time. And what ideology, based on what book, somebody give me, where in the hell does this theory come from that black men are supposed to be in supportive roles of black women? Where does that thought process come from? Does it come from the Bible? Does it come from the Quran? Does it come from the Torah? Where does this ideology stem from? They can't tell you because it's, it's, well, I'll tell you this again. I've always said that we're a matriarch society. So in our minds, it's kind of like single mother raising boys, single mother raising all the children. Like we look at big mama. There's a big mama. You don't hear white people talking about big mama. You don't hear anybody talking about big mama but us. We have placed a woman in such a, uh, on a pedestal in our community that we think it's like that. Why is it wrong for me to say that's wrong? I mean, it was it's a not. beautiful conversation when Candace Owens was talking to Don Lemon and he asked her, he said, do you think it's wrong for me to have a husband? And she said, yes, that's a sin. And he just looked at her like flabbergasted. He couldn't say anything because she stood on her faith. And so I don't think it takes much to be courageous. Yeah, yeah, you might. Hell yeah, if you're a slave and you want to run away, they might cut your leg off. But if, if I see that you got both of your feet, that tells me something about you, huh? <laughs> it tells me something about you. Like a lot of people have to get bad things happen to folks who fight for freedom. And I think that these conversations for me, every time I open my mouth about pushing back against the system, I risk being demonetized. I risk not having the algorithm push my content. I mean, I'd be having... Like the engagement is is crazy, but the impressions as far as they show the content to you, but they don't want to show it to you because I don't I don't represent the the agenda that YouTube and their owners Alphabet, um the the biggest <laughs> donors for the de the Democratic Party for like the last fifteen years has been Google, right? The security state Amazon these people are directly investing in the Democratic Party because they want to have all of your information. Your you should own your digital entity. I'm having high level political theory conversations with you right now. And I need you to like get a pen and pad and understand that you should own your digital entity. No corporation should be able to own any digital representation of yourself. You should own yourself in the physical form, the digital form and the spiritual realm into perpetuity. And no contract can take that away from you. 
I think that's human rights. Well said. We have so much value to the conversation because I will back it up to what you said, engagement. I see the engagement. Y'all engaged. Y'all are tuned in. So we know that this, that this what we're saying is valuable. So, of course, we, we need you to like, subscribe, and share to get it to other places for what he just said because I do believe this. Man, they want to mute the conversation because that's just like on TikTok. It's certain things I say on TikTok. I know for a fact it's going to be at least a, a grand views, so many comments. I mean, it's so much high level engagement. But what I'm saying is like, ah, y'all not trying to make this go viral. They're yeah, not going to push I want that to be like, I, man, I think the con I was listening to this woman and it got me very excited. I'm, when I hear information that I think is good information, uh, a lot of people, you, a lot of young black men, you want you aspire to go to NF the NBA, the NFL. I'm going to ask you, man, go pro in YouTube. I'm be one of the best content creators in the world. And as you practice, I want you to clip up this content, share this content, because if we don't have conversations about freedom, they're, I don't care who wins the election. I don't care if it's Donald Trump. I don't care if it's Kamala Harris. If we don't flex our our muscles as citizens, then they're, the, the institution, the government, they just pound on us and pound on us. I'm going to get pounded on, man. I'm, oh. Hey, man, this is really what I bring to the table when I'm talking to people about politics. And I know you're doing the same. We collectively do it here. What I'm bringing is I want you to think about what you're doing. So, hey, no, I'm not a Trumpster. I'm not a Trumpster in, in terms of like you see these people that go to these rallies and they're like fanatics. No. Will I vote for Trump? Yes. And I have my reasons for it. If you whether you believe in it or not, I want you to start thinking about policy and how a what's what really matters to you. That's what I want you to think about. What really matters? And it's not about, this is not a, uh, I'm not pushing voting. If you don't believe it, you, that's the thing. Here you don't have to. But if I want to vote, I can vote for someone that more so reflects what I believe in than someone who doesn't. I don't have to vote for this person because I'm black or because she's black. What, what, does, that, what does that really mean? So I should just basically look at someone and say, oh, they're this. I should, I should deal. I should put them in a position to have control. Over things that affect my life because of this. We're participating in such low level thinking. There are 330 million people in America. About like 60% of the voting, uh, uh, about, I don't want to get the numbers wrong, okay? A lot of people don't vote. Millions and millions of people who are, who are eligible to vote, they just choose not to vote. But we don't talk to those people. And then when we have conversations that's going back and forth, it's going to be around 51, 49, however the election goes, whether Kamala wins or whether Donald Trump wins, it's going to be around 50, 51, 49. One of, I think that this man was a very powerful political thinker. His name was uh, um, man, Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi. He was the president of Libya, the leader of Libya. He had to leave, man, America funded him, put him into power, watched him rise <laughs> to power. Then when he became powerful, he was like, man, no, no, this is my country. I don't work for you no more. You use the system to get as big as you need to be. And then once you get big enough, you say, I'm not going to play your game no more. And it took them a long time to assassinate this man. And then I then this is how nasty the Democrats are. Hillary Clinton, she was whatever, the Secretary of Defense or whatever at the time for Obama. And she said, we came, we saw, he died. And she started laughing hard with this hideous laugh as, as, uh, as this man had just been executed. And I was like, you have no compassion, you have no sympathy, that's not diplomacy. Like, just think about what you're doing. You're laughing at a dead man and millions of people love that dead man. You're setting a precedence that you can't even sustain yourself. Men don't behave that way. In general, men do not behave that way. If a man was to behave that way, they would call him psychotic. Exactly. Man. When you said that we're having very, you know, surface level or lower level conversations is because I think the general population of people just aren't tuned in, just don't get it anyway. We already talked about the literacy rates here. But I mean, it is so easy to manipulate the public. It is so easy to have, especially us as black people, especially e easy to have us like, you know, cats when they chase that ball and like they do this, they just be stuck in, in a whole nother zone. It's easy to do, do that to us with these issues because we just aren't, we don't understand them enough. There's a lot of people that feel they would have taken the opinion of Gaddafi being assassinated they would have agreed with it just because the news said agree with it they wouldn't do any more research they wouldn't look into it to understand what's really going on geopolitically we just don't do that this gentleman said that it's impossible for america to ever have a true democracy because it, after every election like whoever lost the with the 49 percent they're being ruled by the people they don't agree with he said that's more of, of oppression than it is of a democracy 
when when all of a sudden when I lose, I have no say whatsoever. And so I'm saying no matter who these people, no, no matter who gets elected, if we don't do the right now, I have conversations on how we build the black community because I can't sit here and tell a person that I don't like the way that I'm living. They say, well, how do you want to live? I'm like, well, I don't know. I just know it ain't right. I just know that I, I deserve, I deserve, look what the white people got. Yeah, 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 yeah. What We're negotiating. Now tell me exactly what it is that you want. And if you can't go in there and, and articulate what it is that you need to improve the quality of your life, then what are we talking about? Huh? Tell me, how is Kamala Harris going to improve the quality of your life? Huh? Hey, how is Donald Trump going to change your pockets as soon as he gets elected? You tell me. What is going to change about your life when either one of these individuals gets elected? Yeah, we are so valuable to America. America needs us so much that they bring out their big gun. They bring out um, America's number one <laughs> African, Barack Hussein Obama. How in the world does a man named Barack Hussein Obama to assassinate uh, Saddam Hussein and we elect Barack Hussein because we are insane? I'm just saying, this is crazy. Nah, it's true. They brought out America's number one African to say, you little nigga boys need to behave. Because he the one that had Jesse Jackson crying when he got elected. Like, everybody, nah, we thought, hey, if you thought we felt Good when OJ Simpson was found innocent, which I think is people still rejoice over that. I think that Obama becoming the president is that time seven. I'm pretty sure you know how when you look at the movies, even your grandparents probably had a picture of Martin Luther King and JFK. I'm pretty sure there's some households, there's a fucking picture of Obama, Barack Obama, just sitting up there on the mantle because we love him so much and really don't understand how much more different was he. His presidency than George Bush. Most of the time, revolutionaries, they come from the professional class. You look at Martin Luther King. You look at uh, Gandhi. You look at even even uh, Gaddafi. All these, even Che Guevara and uh, the man who ran Cuba, uh, Castro. He, he was a lawyer by trade. Che Guevara was a doctor by trade. Martin Luther King, you know, he's a preacher, pastor. Uh, uh, the, the nigga from India, I just said his name. Gandhi. Gandhi. <laughs> he, 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 was a, he was a lawyer. Like, most of the time, revolutionaries they come from the professional class. Right. It's very, it's, historically, it's very, it's, it's rare that the revolutionaries come from the working class. Right. Right. Now, most of the time, it's because poor people don't have the resources to 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 distribute the material that's required to spark a revolution in their country. Right. Now we have mass media through digital platforms where we can actually engage in conversations how we improve our, our lives materially if we do it. Right. Are you ready to have heavy conversations? Are you ready to do the hard work? Man, that's the new flex. Like, uh -oh. Hard work is the new flex. Yes. Man, if, if, if whatever, if you're doing something where they just give you money, you're not, you're not working hard. They're, they're working you really hard, huh? They giving you the good pipe. If, if they just give you ten thousand dollars to read an ad, yeah, yeah, because you're a spokesperson for the, for the org, for the system. I mean, but we got a Bernie Sanders this shit. We got to get. Uh, seven dollars from every American citizen. Bernie Sanders has he, he raised the most money from the most people without big donors because it's talking directly to the people. You you don't need housing. You need houses. You need ownership. It's time to be powerful. They're trying to give houses away to immigrants, and so that tells us, man, we're like the most powerful thing in America. The, and and the, the, the American black is the most powerful thing in America. And when you get in these comments. Let's let's really dialogue. Let's really talk the way y'all have been, because guess what? I believe that right in the comment section is where all the change can happen. I believe that on any platform, anywhere you tap into, when you got this kind of conversation going on, that's the people right there. We You got the 10 million man right there. We got everything we need right there. Obama said. And you're thinking about sitting out. <laughs> but you know, cousin Pookie might be. Might be. <laughs> and you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. Man, Pookie. Does does Obama? Did he ever meet a person named Pookie, or did he just watch New Jack City and see Chris Rock and, and say Pookie? Or does he watch YouTube and hear Pookies and Ray Rays? Barack Obama, I want to know how, where are you stealing your culture from? Do you have like a little nigga coach that like he's called the nigga whisperer? He gets in your yeah. ear and says, Barack Obama, this is cool. And you yeah. just regurgitate that shit? That's what he do. I just want to know. Like you have a nigga consultant. That's what Barack Obama, I, mean, I, just, I don't like the way that they're able to pretend to be us. They're doing blackface right in front of me. And I'm like, hey man, but you're not me. 
and you give me this universal blackness, and you play and you play while my community withers away, while I say goodbye to Third Ward, while I say goodbye to Cottage Grove, while I say goodbye to West End, while I watch historic heights become appropriated, and now it's every property is $1.2 million. When I used to go to the Heights Parade and the Heights Parade, it was my friends. They went to school with me, and they had $30,000 homes, and that property went up, like I think, like 100% every year for like 10 years. <laughs> went from $30,000 in 10 years to like $500,000 type. I was like, what in the... And this happened. And all of a sudden, they, they, they do this to poor people, and you can't even do nothing because you don't own nothing. And then you tell me, Hillary Clinton said that we deserve to be able, after we go to work every at the end of the week, you should be able to pay your rent, all that, and you should be able to buy your child some ice cream. My child don't <laughs> want no ice cream. My child wants, my child wants a car. <laughs> <laughs> my child wants my child wants to go to college. Man, some ice cream. These people straight out of movies, man. They're straight out of movies. Talking about gentrification, I believe that it is single handedly one of the biggest issues facing black America, period. You don't even have these neighborhoods that have any type of historical preservation. We're talking about historical black neighborhoods. A few of them get it, but not many of them do. Because to your point, when we talk about dollars, money, do we have it? No, we do not have it. We cannot prevent gentrification. We can pre not, We cannot prevent the appraisal from changing, being so expensive that we just can't pay the taxes. So before you come talk to me, imagine that you own it and you can't keep it. And you can't keep it. <laughs> you have all these homes that were owned. We know this is happening. We're at an age group where we're losing those those historical people. You know these historical neighborhoods that were owned by older elderly black people. They're dying off, and these homes are left to people that guess what? You living already. You you living foot to mouth, check to check, trying to take care of this place in Sugarland, Pearland. You can't even take care of this asset. It's a real asset now. You can't even handle it because it's behind on taxes. What has black? Fix it up. What has Barack Obama done for you, black person? You just tell me. Don't 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 defend him just because he's black. Defend yourself. Defend your family. How did he help you? What did he do to help your life? Why is your community continuing to leave and he won't even acknowledge you? He won't even call you by your name. You're an American. The greatest American alive. For sure. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.